good afternoon and welcome to yet another episode of diabetic care india we are very proud and happy to see that our channel has such a huge following which is extremely encouraging and that keeps us motivated that keeps us doing or trying to do our uh, even better and our uh, you know to reach our limits to push our limits so <clears throat> we are aware of the fact that uh, initially we started off with uh, malayalam videos and then the response has been overwhelming lot many people have been requesting for english videos and so we have started posting english videos of late and the response has been really good thank you each one of you thanks a lot continue supporting us and helping us now let me come to the topic of uh, today's talk today's talk is about something that all of you have eagerly awaited to hear from us a test that diabetics keep doing every 3 to 6 months you have guessed what i am talking about right it is hba1c also known as glycosylated hemoglobin also known as glycated hemoglobin so these is all the three names mean one and the same so you could call it hba1c you could call it glycosylated hemoglobin or glycated hemoglobin these are one and the same stuff so let's just look at what exactly hba1c is why diabetics need to do it and very importantly whether hba1c is a 100% reliable and dependable test like as commonly believed so the first question what exactly is glycosylated hemoglobin let me put it in very simple language if i were to place a nail a metal nail you know a metal nail on this table and just leave it there for a few days what would happen obviously that nail would start getting rusted right so where does this rust comes come from this rust comes from within the nail because of the action of oxygen and the moisture in the atmosphere acting on the iron which converts the iron into ferric oxide which is nothing but rust this is uh, uh, from our basic school lessons i'm sure we uh, you all remember that almost a similar thing happens to the hemoglobin in our blood when it comes in contact with glucose now this glucose is a very active molecule glucose that is let's call it just sugar common language is sugar right glucose is a very active molecule it cannot simply sit idle it has to keep doing something all the time so it starts working upon almost everything that it comes in contact with it affects everything that it comes in contact with and it changes everything that it comes in contact with so when the hemoglobin which is present in our blood you know hemoglobin is present in our blood right is exposed to the glucose some changes occur in the hemoglobin just like that nail i told you about all right this is expressed as a percentage of the hemoglobin that is present in our body and given as a lab report so you would have a lab report which says your hba1c is 4.5% or 5.5% or 6.5 whatever all right it is expressed in percentage in our part of the uh, world yes in several other countries especially in the developed countries nowadays hba1c is expressed in terms of millimoles per mole so that's another unit i'm not going into the details of that but in our country in india it is always and or traditionally it has been reported as a percentage so you have understood one thing hba1c is 
a normal molecule or a normal phenomenon in everybody. All of us will have HbA1c. HbA1c is not a disease. Please note the point. So if you have HbA1c, it doesn't mean that you have diabetes or you have any other disease because HbA1c is present in all human beings, as I told you. Now, there is a limit to everything, right? Even for this rust, a little bit of rust here and there on this nail is not going to affect its, affect its strength or its utility. You can still use the nail. It would still look okay and you can still use it, am I right? But if the rust exceeds a certain level, then you will have to throw away that nail. That nail would serve no more purpose. It will weaken the nail and then you cannot use the nail anymore. Something like that happens with the hemoglobin that is exposed to the glucose. So you can, you have HbA1c normally in your blood and mine. All of us have it. But when it exceeds a certain limit, then the problem starts. So what is this limit? You can have absolutely uh, HbA1c which is absolutely normal as long as it is less than 5.6%. Alright, now many of you would be raising their eyebrows, right? What is this doctor talking about? Because we have heard that HbA1c cutoff is 6.5. Please bear with me, please be patient. As of now, make a note of this value, it is 5.6%. So you can have an HbA1c up to 5.6% and there is nothing to worry about. Once it crosses 5.6%, that means your blood vessels have started getting small, in a very small way affected by the blood sugar, the increasing blood sugars. Alright, so we call it the stage of pre-diabetes up to 6.4%. So Please make a note, from 5.6 to 6.4 is considered pre-diabetic range. So pre-diabetes, I am coming out with another episode. I am not going into details of pre-diabetes now. Please uh, uh, just remember as of now, just remember that HbA1c of 5.6 to 6.4 is pre-diabetes. But any HbA1c more than 6.5 is considered diabetic range. So, if you have an HbA1c of above 6.5%, then you have to call yourself a diabetic or you will be uh, called a diabetic once it crosses 6.5. So, pre-diabetes as you, uh, I might, I hope many of you are aware, of, aware, can be reversed completely. So, if you are in the HbA1c range of 5.6 to 6.4, it can be completely reversed. But once it crosses 6.5, it becomes increasingly difficult. We'll talk about it in another episode. All right. Now coming back to this HbA1c. So what does it show? What does HbA1c show? Again, many of you would be aware of the fact that it shows an average blood sugar levels. Yes, but that's only part of the story. What exactly does this average mean? It is not like it will go through each and every blood sugar and show up as the HbA1c value of the preceding two to three months. No, that's not what happens. Because your blood sugars are varying every single millisecond, every single second, every single minute, every single hour, your blood sugars are varying. This HbA1c is going to reflect the entire variations over the preceding two to two and a half months. Let's, uh, you know, remember it as two and a half months. No, am I trying to tell you that uh, the, uh, it is uniformly distributed over two and a half months? No, wrong. The HbA1c at this moment, suppose I were to do my HbA1c at this moment, it is going to be strongly biased towards the last 10 to 15 days. In other words, suppose I were to get an HbA1c of 6%, I, I, I do my HbA1c and get a percentage of 6%. Alright, as much as 4 to 4.5 percentage of that 6% has come only from the last 15 days. 
that's a point to be noted here so it's not like uh, the hba1c is a true reflection of the entire preceding two to two and a half months no it is strongly biased towards the last 15 days and this is uh, that is this is a point that you have to keep in mind before you interpret hba1c all right and can the hba1c give you uh, wrong information yes it can in fact in certain patients it is notorious to mislead you it can not it can mislead you a lot so what do i mean by that you can have a spuriously low hba1c or a spuriously high hba1c which don't correlate with the blood sugar levels at all you can have that so it's not like okay x has so much of hba1c therefore his average blood sugars are so much no you can't blindly say that there are other factors to be considered for instance if you have liver disease if you are pregnant you know if you are a uh, pregnant woman if you are a, a very young kid if you have a very young kid with type uh, with with diabetes then you better be very cautious about interpreting the hba1c anemia very common cause in india anemia can give uh, you know wrong hba1c levels spuriously high or spuriously low hba1c level anemia is a very common problem in india especially iron deficiency anemia and then there are other what are called hemoglobinopathies like for instance thalassemia thalassemia can also give you uh, erroneously um, elevated or uh, decreased hba1c levels depends on uh, then you can have hemolytic anemias again which can make the hba1c uh, wide of the mark so hba1c is not like has to be blindly believed you need to always correlate it with the patient's prevailing health condition and also the medications he or she might be on and also correlate it with the blood sugar levels that is why even in patients whom we advise continuous glucose monitoring we still tell them to continue doing their blood sugar levels with their glucometers and we will get hba1c levels with the continuous gluco glucose monitoring as well that is not what your actual hba1c is again another very important point to be noted those of you out there who are on continuous glucose monitoring or who have done a glu continuous glucose monitoring would have a report which shows an hba1c level in fact that hba1c level is not what you actually had at the time that hba1c level was of only those days of the cgms whatever 7 or 10 or 14 days whatever you have done only of those days the glucose reading taken during the cgms on those days was used to calculate that particular hba1c it was not your actual hba1c now it becomes a bit confusing i agree i i confess it's a bit confusing but please remember now how do you figure out what is the most accurate hba1c there comes the test what the gold standard test which is the best so the gold standard is called high performance liquid chromatography hplc method the hplc method of measuring the hba1c is considered the gold standard so if you have access to a laboratory or an institution that does hba1c in the hplc method please go for it it might cost you anywhere between uh, 450 rupees to 750 rupees you know depending on the city where you live and the lab that you choose HbA1c an advantage big advantage is that it doesn't require any fasting so when we talk of the drawbacks we have to talk of the benefits also yeah uh, drawback I told you it's a you can have false negatives and false positives you can have erroneously elevated or erroneously low spuriously elevated or spuriously low HbA1c's and HbA1c shouldn't be blindly believed in certain circumstances like uh, anemias, liver disease, 
uh, alcoholism alcoholics then pregnancy then very uh, young kids so these people you have to be very careful while interpreting the hba1c so we talked about all that but the good uh, part of the story is that hba1c doesn't require any fasting you can do it any time of the day or night without any regard to your fasting status that's a great thing and then uh, another thing is uh, yeah it is a bit expensive and uh, even to this day it's not done in each and every laboratory throughout india especially in the rural region so you might have some difficulty getting hba1c done and then uh, you can't do it with your needle prick yes there are some needle prick slide tests for hba1c but then they are tricky because they need exact temperature and exact humidity and all that so nowadays we don't use them as much you have finger uh, prick samples you can have you can have you have tests in which you can have this sample but then they are not very reliable so i recommend that you go to a regular lab and get your uh, uh, venous blood taken and then get an hba1c done on that sample that's a good idea right so i hope i have touched upon fairly uh, all the all the points that need to be discussed about hba1c hba1c uh, let me tell you one thing it's a huge topic hba1c is not the only uh, subfraction there are many others you know if you have hba1c it only follows that you must have hba1 a a1 b and then a1 c right so you can have these are all various types of the adult hemoglobin that is why that a comes hba is for the adult hemoglobin anyway that's another big topic i don't want to bore you with that but i hope i have answered pretty much of the common questions or the common doubts and queries that you might have had about hba1c in case you have any more doubts in case you would like some clarification from us we welcome all these questions from you please do uh, post your questions in the comments section and please help us and support us by sharing this video with as many of your friends and relatives as possible and don't forget to click the bell icon that is your notification icon so please help us continue this channel and please help us reach more and more people in different corners of the world so that they get awareness about diabetes we are trying to keep it as simple and as straight forward and as useful and as practical as possible for all of you out there please give us your feedback so that we can improve further thank you so much and namaste ningal ee kanda video ningalku ishtapettengil dayavayi ningada bandhukalkum ningada suhrutukalkum idu kaimaarga avarumayittu idu share cheya idine subscribe cheyan avare preerippikkya koode ഇതിൻ്റെ കൂടെ കാണുന്ന ആ ബെല്ലൈക്കൺ ഒന്ന് ക്ലിക്ക് ചെയ്യാനും പറയുക വളരെ നന്ദിയുണ്ട് നമസ്കാരം